Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Forrest with Rocky Mountain School of Photography and today we're gonna to take a look at how to take an image like this. That photograph is of the Andromeda Galaxy, which is one of the best starting targets for beginning astrophotographers. That galaxy is large, it's bright, and in the Northern Hemisphere, especially in the fall and winter, it's very high in the sky. What I'm gonna do in this series of videos is walk us through the entire process of capturing that image, from the very first steps of planning the target and what you need to know before you even go outside, to the steps involved headed out into the field and actually shooting, finally to the editing process and getting a final image. I think it's important to start with the equipment that we're gonna need for this shoot. At the core, you're gonna want a tripod, a camera, and a lens. And I wouldn't recommend using a point and shoot or a cell phone for this. You're really gonna want a mirrorless or DSLR with a nice telephoto lens, something in the 200 to 300 millimeter range. You can go wider than that, but just know that you're gonna have to crop in more and your image is not gonna be as clear. For the purposes of this video, I'm gonna be using my Fuji X-T4 with the Fuji 50 to 140 millimeter lens. Now, 140 is not as long as I would like to go, but on my crop sensor Fuji, it's gonna be more like a 220 millimeter lens, which is enough focal length. Optionally, if you're interested in extending your focal length, adding something like a teleconverter or teleextender can give you a little bit more reach at the expense of a little bit of brightness. Now, an optional add-on for this shoot will be a tracker or a mount. These are devices that move your camera with the night sky. We made a lot of videos on those. You can check them out in our channel. I'll link them down in the description. But what that can do is that can allow you to stretch your shutter speed a little longer than you would tend to be able to do without one. Another optional accessory would be some sort of remote trigger, something like an intervalometer or a cable release, some way to push the button on your camera without actually pushing the button on your camera. When we're shooting long exposures, we don't wanna be shaking the camera by pushing the shutter button, so triggering it remotely is super important. Alternatively, if you have a camera and an app that works with your phone, feel free to use that as that's a great way to trigger your camera remotely as well. So now that we've got equipment out of the way, let's talk a little bit about planning for the perfect night. We want a few things to be true. Obviously, we're gonna want clear skies, very important. We're also gonna want little to no moon. So definitely check out the moon phase calendar. I've linked one down in the description and go out on a new moon night or close to new moon night. The moon has a huge impact on our astrophotography quality and we really want as little moon as possible to get the best possible image. The third thing is let's try to go out on a night that doesn't have a lot of wind. Wind will blow our camera, blur our images, and it's never a great thing to contend with. Finally, let's try to find an area to shoot in that has little light pollution. Again, I've linked a light pollution map down in the description. You can check that out and kind of look for areas in your local vicinity that might be darker skied than your backyard. Do understand though that we're gonna be out shooting for quite a while. So try to find a place that you can be comfortable in and that you're not uh, trespassing or doing anything else that you shouldn't. Try to find some land you have permission to be on for a couple hours, somewhere where you can really spend time getting everything set up, getting everything perfect and learning how to do this. So now that we understand the gear involved as well as the location that we're gonna wanna choose and some weather conditions, I think it's important to do a couple more things before we head out there into the field. The first thing is let's talk about finding our object. Before you head out there, I highly recommend you download an app on your phone called Stellarium. I'm gonna link that down in the description. I'm also linking a video in the description on an in-depth guide on how to set up and use Stellarium. And it's actually with my other channel, Fofo Astro. So definitely check that out, watch it, familiarize yourself with Stellarium a bit as it's gonna be an incredibly useful tool when we get out there shooting to help us find the object we're trying to photograph, in this case, the Andromeda Galaxy. Next, I want to address our biggest challenge during the shoot. Unfortunately, because the Earth is always rotating, we are moving underneath the stars continually. So basically what we're gonna be doing in order to take our photograph of Andromeda is very low speed action or sports photography, right? We're not shooting a stationary subject, we're shooting something that's moving overhead. What this means is we need to use a fast enough shutter speed to stop that motion. You might say, well, when I look up at the sky force, it's not like watching a race, right? I'm not seeing like NASCAR drivers driving by super fast, but the movement of the sky is appreciable, especially as we use longer and longer lenses. 
The thing we need to understand is the longest shutter speed we should use is equal to 400 divided by the focal length of our lens. We call this the 400 rule. And I like to think of it more as a 400 guideline because there definitely are exceptions to this. But in general, if I'm using a 200 millimeter lens, I'm going to take 400 divided by 200 and the result is the longest shutter speed in seconds that I should use without seeing any trailing in my images. So in this case, I'm going to use a 140 millimeter lens on my Fuji sensor, and my Fuji has a 1.5x crop factor. So I'm gonna take 140 times 1.5, which is, uh, let's see, 140, half of that 70, so 210, 210, and we're gonna take 400 divided by 210. And I'm not good enough to do that math, so let me go ahead and swipe down here, grab my calculator, take 400 divided by 210, which is the effective focal length of my lens, and I get 1.9, so about two seconds. So what that means is if I use a shutter speed slower than two seconds, my stars will look like they're trailing and I'll take a blurry picture. I won't have a crisp image of Andromeda. Alternatively, if I take my shutter speed and I put it faster than two seconds, like one second or 1.5 seconds, I should get nice, sharp pinpoint stars. Now, an important disclaimer is get out there in the field and test this. Take a photograph at 1.5 seconds, play it back on the screen and zoom in and look at the stars. And if the stars look nice and round, you know you're good to go. In some instances, the 400 rule, even if you follow it perfectly, will still lead to some trailing. So you'll wanna go a little bit faster of a shutter speed than what the 400 rule states. Now I mentioned trackers at the beginning of this video. If you have a tracker, something like the iOptron Skyguider Pro or maybe a Fornax Light Track 2, again, videos linked in the description, you're gonna be able to push this 400 rule and kind of throw it out the window altogether and instead use a 30 second, 60 second, or even 120 second shutter speed. The other thing I'm gonna set before I go out in the field is my aperture and my ISO. I always shoot wide open with my aperture, so that's my lowest number. So I'm gonna set my camera in this case to f4 or f2.8, depending on what lens I'm using. And I'm also gonna set my ISO to something guess and checky. Let's say 800 or 1600. My ISO is the variable here. It's the one that once we get in the field, we're gonna go ahead and change that and adapt that as we go. So we've got our equipment selected, we've got a usable night selected, we've got Stellarium downloaded on our phone, and we've set up some settings on our camera. I'm gonna talk about a couple more settings that we wanna get set, and then we're gonna go ahead and conclude this video and wait for part two. The last things we're gonna wanna set on our camera is we're gonna wanna make sure that we're shooting raw and not JPEG. Raw images have more data, more detail, and we're able to edit them further after we do this shoot. I highly recommend that every astro photo you ever try to photograph, you use raw, as JPEG just doesn't have enough data to get that information. The second thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn off long exposure noise reduction. That can really negatively impact our images, and if we wanna add calibration frames, we can do that later. Again, I have videos on that linked in the description. I think this is an important part of the video to just stop for a second and say that astrophotography is hugely complex, and there are many layers of things that you can build onto it. This video is purely meant to be a basic introduction where we do the minimum amount to get a very good image. There are tons of different layers of additional skills that we can add on to what we're covering in this video to improve and correct for certain problems that we might see in our final image. With all that set, we're gonna head out into the field in the next video and take a look at the process involved with actually shooting this photo. We're also gonna address things like focus, things like finding our object in the field, things like exposure, and all of the other things we need to take all of the photographs we need in order to put something together. If you all wanna follow along with this journey, make sure you hit the subscribe button, drop a like on the video, and lastly, comment down below if you have any sorts of questions. You can expect part two to this video in the next couple of weeks. Right now, it's a full moon at time of recording this video, so I need to wait a little bit so that we have a perfect night to go out and do our filming of part two. Again, also, we will have a third part following this one where we go into the editing of the images, how we put everything together, stack it, and use Adobe Photoshop to build a final image. Thanks everyone for watching. I'll catch you in the next video. Again, make Make sure you hit subscribe to stay up to date and get notified when we post part two and part three.